Hello, Adam Stark here. I am here to do a lyrics breakdown on my newest piece called I Write With No Rules. Okay, so I'm just going to go over my lyrics here that I made. Um, now, in this particular rap, I wanted to make sure that I did something special, and I went and went ahead and bit, did every single line had multiple meanings in it. Okay, and that's some of them only had double meanings, some of them had three, some of them had five, and one of them even had seven. You know, I wanted to really hit home here and show people my talent and my skills, so I'm just going to go ahead and go right into the lyrics here on the screen, uh, going in order from how the rap was presented. I will just simply read the lyrics, not rap them, and then I will explain how they have multiple meanings and any other information that was needed to show how amazing and talented my writing process was on this particular piece. So, okay, I'll get started here. <clears throat> the first line was Adam Stark's weakness today. He will only speak in multiple meanings, my fault. Now I said that last part, my fault, because my fault, that's the typical saying you say when um, you're basically admitting to your mistakes or admitting to your problem or your weaknesses and that's why i started off by saying adam stark's weaknesses today and you know i end up by saying my fault but then i'm also saying that that is my weakness is my fault is that i only do that i only speak in multiple meanings okay then my second line i said i'm into voodoo causing this pussy pain she's gonna want to take my doll now my doll, M-I-D-O-L, is a pronoun, and I don't usually use pronouns. I try my best not to, but once in a while I do use a pronoun for my raps, and this one it made sense to. Um, having, <laughs> now pussy, obviously, that's slang for, you know, vagina and woman's private parts, and if you're having pain in that area, then you'll want to take my doll, which is a medicine or a drug for that. And, but what I'm saying is I'm into voodoo, causing this pussy pain and that didn't see i wasn't implying directly that it had to be a woman because you know pussy is also slang for just a punk it can be a guy that's a punk or something and being into voodoo causing them pain that person's going to want to take their doll their voodoo doll because that's what you do with voodoo is you take a doll which is a representation of someone else you stick pins into it to hurt that person in real life what you do to the doll happens to the person. At least that's what the ritualistic belief is. And that's why I'm saying, you know, in this instance, she's going to want to take my doll of her um, voodoo doll. And she's going to want to take my doll, which is the drug for, you know, because I'm causing the pussy pain is what I was saying. Okay. And then continuing with the same rhyme pattern, I have another double meaning. And I say, don't whine and cry after that big fall you took. I'm just saying nobody saw you wipe out. Now, the double meaning comes in here because of the last word, which is really two words. You just you say it one way. It sounds the same both times. Wipe out and question mark why pout. Okay. Now, wipe out is when you fall down, you accidentally take a dive and you get hurt. That's a wipe out. You get a wipe out. You had a wipe out. You know, that's what happens when you fall down. You take... You take a big dive, you get hurt, you land on your knees or something, that's a wipeout. And it sounds exactly the same as saying the two-word phrase, why pout? Pout is whining, pout is crying, and that's why I say don't whine and cry after that big fall you took. I just combined them both into saying why pout. Okay, now the next line is, I'm a nasty writer, you'd compare my mind to a pervert's. Call this writing perverse. Now I said this. I said the last word, perv verse, slowly so that I kind of hold on to the V, the letter V sound, because that way I can make it two different possible meanings where I'm saying, I said I'm a nasty writer, compare my mind to a pervert. So, okay, that makes sense. Because um, nasty, you know, that can mean as in you're talented in writing because it's, like, you know, that dude's nasty. He's got some sick writings, you know, that's hip hop slang. But then also nasty can mean perverted, it can mean gross or whichever grotesque you prefer. And, you know, holding on to that V sound, I can I can say, call this writing perverse. 
okay, the definition of perverse works because I'm saying that this is a perverse, uh, you know, speak or language of writing. But I'm also saying, you know, you could call this writing perverse because perv is a slang word that's short for pervert. So you, I'm just basically calling it the writing what it is and a verse and then calling it by what it is in the writing, which is a perv. So perverse or perverse. So it's basically just combining those two sounds to make one word and then two meanings there. Okay, now next line. I'm offensive and I'm not tired, so I won't stop here. I'm taking it farther. You can ruin houses to fix them while ruining good spouses for all involved, being a home wrecker looking for a maintenance partner. Now this one is going on with the theme of being perverted or being perverse. Is I'm saying that, okay, you can ruin houses to fix them while ruining good spouses for all involved to be in a home wrecker. No, I'll stop there. Okay, the the phrase home wrecker means in slang, that means that you're getting in a relationship with somebody who's in a relationship and you're ruining the original relationship because you're having a relation to the person at, you know, at subject is basically having an affair, and that's what you are. You're a homewrecker when you do that. And basically, another thing is being, I said you can ruin houses to fix them. Now, ruining houses, that can be a literal, you know, interpretation of me saying that you're a homewrecker, is in you ruin houses, you take a wrecking ball or whatever, you ruin the houses, you're a homewrecker. You know, it could mean either way. And then I said, you're looking for a maintenance partner. So if you say, the word maintenance and you you could say it just at the right speed to make it sound like mate and its partner it apostrophe s partner maintenance partner or mate and its partner because i said you're a home wrecker but i said you ruin houses to fix them so you're looking for a maintenance partner a partner in maintenance of fixing a house and i'm also saying Home wrecker in the perverted sense of you're getting in a relationship, ruining it for everybody involved because that's what happens. You ruin relationships by being the slang version of a home wrecker, and then you're, you'd be looking for a mate and its partner. Okay, again on the you know perverted side of things, because a mate would be somebody who is in a committed relationship. You could say that they have a mate and their partner, and I said its partner because I wasn't being gender specific. Because, and I was implying somebody else, not myself, because I'm straight, so obviously I wouldn't be looking for a man. So I was saying it's because it could, I was putting you in this, not meaning the audience directly, but just being non specific, is, which is the form I write when I'm saying something that doesn't imply with what I want to be seen as. Okay, so that was that double meaning right there. Pretty dope. Okay, then the next line down here we got. Shoot someone in the head to see if it can open, but he died for false beliefs. Isn't it bizarre? He wasn't Dominican at all, but he was, sh but he was shot in his own head. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me say that again. Shoot someone in the head to see if, to see if it can open, but he died for false beliefs. Isn't it bizarre? He wasn't Dominican at all, but he was in his own head. So you shot him in the Dominican part. Okay, so this one was dope 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 because what I'm saying is okay you want to shoot someone in the head to see if it can open you know that's just a sick sadistic twisted way of saying you know you, you wanted to experiment with seeing what it's like to see an open head head wound a headshot we'll see what it's like okay dome is slang for the head okay and I'm saying he died for false beliefs the guy that got shot I'm saying, now, the guy was not Dominican. That was not his ethnicity. That was not his his roots or his origin. I said, but he was in his own head. So I'm saying, in his own head, he thought he was a Dominican person, but he was not. So I basically said, so if that's the only part of him that is Dominican, is the made-up part in his own mind of this person, and you shot him in the Dominican part because that is the only part of him that's Dominican, is the made-up part in his, in his own head, because he's not really Dominican. And if you say the word slow enough, Dominican, it can sound like dome, 
and it can. And then the word part is the same on each one. So you shot him in the dome, and it can part, because you shot him in the head, and it can part dome, and it can part, which you wanted to see if the head would open when you shot him, and it's the only part of him that's the Dominican part, making that a double meaning there. Okay, dope use of wordplay I used there. Okay, the next part I'm saying is, but it's good writing for a bad verse, polar opposites there, but then you're immune to pain, but you think it's worth the risk. Now, that's a common saying that people use, is the saying as if I make it a suggestion. And then you know what you do is you actually end up saying the phrase, can't hurt. You know, it's it's common enough that everybody knows this saying. All I did was add an extra spin to it and make it another meaning. You're immune to pain, but you think it's worth the risk. Can't hurt. Now, if you're immune to pain, then you cannot hurt. I mean, it's realistic. I understand you're not realist. Nobody is realistically immune to pain. But if you, if somebody set subject was immune to pain, then they wouldn't be able to get hurt. Correct? Exactly. That's why I ended it with the phrase "can't hurt." And I'm also saying that then the normal usage of this phrase "can't hurt" is applied because that's what happens when you use that phrase typically. In real life, you say something, and then when you're thinking of an idea, you're trying to figure out how to solve a problem, you end up by saying, there you go. I made a double meaning out of just using that simple phrase. Okay, now, continuing on here, I said, you want to improve yourselves. What better? And I'm basically saying, you know, okay, you want to improve yourselves. What better? As in, okay, what better? And now this isn't an implied double meaning, but it's, it's basically just adding some thought-provoking, you know, words at the end here. I'm basically saying, okay, you want to improve yourselves better. Okay, good. You should strive for better. But I'm also saying, you want to improve yourselves, and then I'm just saying, what, dot, 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 better, as in better, is that what you want to have? In, is that what you want to call your improvement is something better? Okay, and then I'm saying, you and your partner have lots of talents, so count them up as a team, and mesh your skills together. Now, if you say the word measure, okay, M-E-A-S-U-R-E, -E, and if you say mesh your fast, say it fast though, M-E-S-H space Y-O-U-R, or just the word, or just the, you know, slang word you are, as in the sound your, because you say the word your fast, your, you know, common slang that we use, and you can sound exactly the same, measure, Mesh your or mesh your. So you say it fast enough and it sounds exactly the same. So I was saying, you guys should count your talents. That's where measure comes in. And I'm saying you should count them up as a team and then mesh your skills together or measure skills together. I made a dope double meaning there by using, you know, making the same sounding words together in that part and basically saying you're a team, count them up together, but also mesh them together in the same spot, you know good way to good way to learn from balancing each other anyways so the next line i'm coming up to here is okay what's to lose if you get punched you could get a fat lip and if you whine about it i'd say hey get tough fat lip now this one is just a funny line because they took the same sounds and i put them into each at the end of each line so you know if you get punched, you could get a fat lip, okay? That's, you know, I'm pretty sure people understand this already, but just in case, I'll go through it. If you get punched in the face and the lip, you can get a fat lip. You Your lip will be bruising, and it'll be swollen, and it'll be a fat lip. Calling somebody fat lip is also an insult. I mean, it's not a very common one, but it is used. You can call someone fat lip. And I was basically saying... If you whine about the fact that you have a fat lip, I'd say, hey, get tough, fat lip. And it's I'm basically saying get tough, and then I'm calling you the name fat lip. Okay? And whereas it sounds exactly like the first previous, or the previous line at the end, get a fat lip, or get tough, fat lip, 
you say it fast enough, it sounds exactly the same, but you could tell I'm saying something completely different. So I just wanted to make a good point that, you know, I had a, you know, basically four word, you know, provision going here where I made them sound exactly the same, but I was saying something completely different each time. Okay, keep going, continuing on here. Suffer from multiple annoying cuts in need of bandages and scratch yourself from all of the damages. Now, damn itches and damages sound exactly the same when you say them at the right speed, okay? That is exactly what I did here. I'm basically saying, I said right here, I was implying, I said, you have annoying cuts, and I said multiple, so it's it's plural. You know the word's going to be plural with an S at the end, more than one, not singular. And I said annoying cuts in need of bandages. And then I said scratch yourself from all of the damn itches. Now, the damn itches works because it's annoying and you're scratching them. That means that's an itch. So the damn itches. But also I said multiple cuts, okay? in need of bandages, which would mean that you're scratching yourself from all of the damages. See how I made one thing that sounds, or two things that sound exactly like one thing, combined it together in one sentence because I used previous words in the predicates to make them match up and have multiple meanings through on into the end. Okay, now I'll keep going here. I said, be lucky you're not me though, or more so, the fact that I can only eat spirits, so I'm always looking for morsels. Now, this one's just dope. It's very simple to understand, but just in case nobody understood it the first time they heard this rap, basically I'm saying, okay, be lucky you're not me because I'm so rare that I can only eat spirits, okay? <laughs> I can only eat spirits. Spirits and souls are, you know, basically they're along the same thing, you know, a, someone's spirit and someone's soul. And I'm saying I'm always looking for more souls because that's what I eat. I eat spirits, which means I eat souls. And so I'm always looking for more souls because that's what I eat. And more souls and the word more, the, the one word, morsels, M-O-R-S-E-L-S, -S -S, morsels. Okay, morsels means a small portion of food. So basically, I was able to make... Uh, say two things that sound exactly like one thing and it was just a dope way it came together because I, I implied that I was looking for something to eat and I implied that I can only eat spirits so it made sense when I put them together in the end saying more souls and more souls sounds exactly the same but I made a nice double meaning there okay now the next line this is a quintuple this is a five implied meaning rhyme five implied meanings you say it one way and it has five meanings very dope so this one is my friend my age always stays way high over the shore by these pillars i'm at and he's a stabber so for your safety listen to my answer while you look in my specific direction and location the problem and then you have a pause the problem appears hazard so i'll go through each meaning okay the problem hazard, P-E-E-R apostrophe S, hazard, and the word hazard is the same on every one. There's no, uh, you know, variation of that part. The word hazard is going to be the same on every of the, one of the five meanings. But, okay, appear, P-E-E-R apostrophe S. Now, appear means somebody your age, and it can mean a friend, but it really means someone your age. Okay, and that's where I said, my friend, my age, and I said he is a stabber. So that's that would be my peer's hazard, a peer's hazard. Okay, and then the next multiple meaning here, it's meaning number two is a peer's hazard, A-P-P-E-A-R-S, hazard. So it appears hazard, and that's where, you know, I had to word this very carefully in order to make each one of these five meanings work. Otherwise, if you worded it with one word different, it wouldn't work, or it would sound silly or it may have only implied two instead of five or one or whatever so i had to make sure i worded very carefully so i said you know i said basically i said that there's a guy up here and he's a stabber so for your own safety and look over in my location and understand that the problem appears hazard and now hazard of course is a word that means a problem anyway and so it can imply any number of things where i was basically saying the problem appears hazard 
So I'm just basically simplifying the whole problem by saying that. And of course, appears and appears sound the same. Now, the third meaning is up here's hazard. U P space H E R E apostrophe S space hazard. So appears also sounds the same as appears and appears, but up here's hazard. I told you that I was way high over the shore by pillars, and I said you need to, for your safety, you need to look in my specific direction and location. So I said the problem, apostrophe S, that means, you know, that ownership and i said up here's hazard i said that's the problem is up here's hazard up here way high over the shore by these pillars this is the hazard up here's hazard so understand that and i was basically just saying you need to understand that this is up here's hazard this is the area where there is a hazard that everyone needs to know about now the fourth meaning appears hazard sounds the same as the other three okay a space p i e r apostrophe s space hazard a pier because that's what a pier is a pier is an area high over the shore with pillars that's what a pier is and so i said the problem can be also implied a peers hazard a pier apostrophe s hazard because this is a pier where the problem is taking place at and ownership of it that peers hazard okay and the fifth and final meaning in this multiple meaning metaphor I wrote was a pierce hazard. A space P-I-E-R-C-E -E space hazard. Okay, sounds the same as the other four. Appears, up, hears, appears, and a pierce. They all sound the same if you say them at the right speed and everything. Now, a pierce piercing means like a stabbing a cut or it means you know you know intravenous sort of you know damage taking place or <clears throat> you know an inner an inner you know sort of damage taking place you know something pierced to the skin the skin something got into it you know something got under the skin but so up uh, i just i mentioned up here that the problem is that he's a stabber okay so a stabbing is literally the same thing as a pierce, a pierce wound, a pierce cut. Somebody who's going to pierce you with whatever stabbing device they're using, whatever it is. And so I said the problem can also be implied that it is a pierce hazard because that's what a stabbing could mean. So here you go. I got five multiple implied meanings. You say this rhyme one way, say it one way, it sounds the same, and you have five implied meanings. Very talented here. Okay, continuing on. I said in the next lines here, perfect unity like two titties. That one's just funny. I mean, I thought of it, and it was just too hilarious not to put in here. Okay, perfect unity. You you know, I'm sure this has been brought in many times, you know, in, into question. Like, what is perfect unity? You know, you could say it's, you know, two partners that work together. What is it, a covalent bond? Is it, is it two, is it, you know, money and cash? Is it, you know, TV and video games? What is it? But I just said, yeah, this is the most simple one. <laughs> Perfect unity is like two titties. Okay. You know, I just say, I know it's funny, it's silly, but it's just something that you could say works for, you know, the saying of the cause here. Okay. Anyways, continuing on, I said, naked eye in a new dimension senses nudity. Now, I didn't imply this, but I just thought the little Easter egg here. Okay. Naked eye, that's a saying. People say, look into the naked eye or the naked eye sees things, whatever. Just a saying. And I said, in a new dimension, senses nudity. Nudity means nakedness and naked, whatever. And I was saying, wasn't implying it, so I didn't make it a double meaning. So I'm not, I wasn't, you know, implying it at all. But just making the point to note here that this is an Easter egg I hid in this rhyme. Is you could also sound it out. It sounds like I'm saying, in a nude dimension but i didn't imply it i just thought it would be something that would sound funny so i put it in there since is nudity and then next line here i thought was hilarious i said puff daddy should remix himself and make a new ditty now puff daddy p diddy diddy puffy sean combs all these names he's got but puff daddy i decided to go with but you know he he made the remix you know give the man his credit he made the remix 
The remix has been used millions of times ever since he started the trend, you know, and I'm basically saying, you know, he of all things he should have remixed, maybe he should remix himself, and then he can make a new ditty. And that, you know, sounds the same as the word nudity, and, you know, it just I was going off of the rhyme scheme. But I was saying, wouldn't that be funny? You know, he should remix himself. He remixed everything else damn near, you know. And then I keep going here with the same rhyme scheme, but I said, I stink while being a free, a free horn instrument teacher. It's a tutor thing. Now, I stink, that could be a tutor thing, T-O-O-T-E-R thing, because a tutor means you're a farter or, you know, you have a flagellance problem. And then I also said, I stink while being a free horn instrument teacher, a tutor thing, T-U-T-O-R. Now, a tutor is a teacher, but it's a free teacher. You don't get paid to do a tutor job, and if you do, you know, then you're just hustling on the side. But a tutor is a free teacher, and I sang a free horn instrument teacher. And so basically, that's what it would be, is you would be, you know, doing the toot of the horn, and I just thought it'd be hilarious to put it in there like it's a tutor thing. You know, that's what it is. It's a free and it's a sound, and it's, you know, you stink because you're tooting in the fart sense, okay? I know it's a little silly, but it's just a little dope double-meaning concept I just threw in there, you know? And then next year, going on with the same rhyme scheme, just me being funny, you know, ending this rhyme scheme with a hilarious line. I was glad that I found out and I could come up with. It took me a little bit to write it out, but um, then I said, never fail. In fact, I've only dropped the ball twice in my life. Puberty. And I gave it a little suspense there, and I ended it with a funny line. You know, there's a common saying that you drop the ball. Oh, you drop the ball on this one. You drop the ball. You know, it doesn't have to do anything with sports. It can, but it can just mean, you know, you tried something, and you sucked at it. You have completely failed. It was horrible in the end. That's what happens when you drop the ball. And I said, yeah, I've dropped. I never fail. I've only dropped the ball twice. And it was puberty. Of course, being a male in the puberty, what happens is your ball is dropped. Two balls drop. That's what happens in, in your nutsack. So I thought that was just a hilarious way to put that one together, just to be funny and dope at the same time. Okay, next I said, a while ago you'd view Adam as an unemployed lazy peasant who would never blow your mind as earthlings. I'm the ruler of the commercial business now, so imagine if you saw that Adam working. Now this is a triple meaning, triple implied meaning rhyme you say it one way and it sounds exactly the same but it's three implied meanings so i the first one is the it, it's all with the last words here but adam working my name is adam working okay easy enough adam were king were as in w-e-r-e -E, space k-i-n-g so if if adam were king but adam were king as in the past or adam were king if Adam were king, and then finally that ad a d I'm I apostrophe M space working. Okay, so basically, here's the triple meaning here. I said, first of all, that everyone views Adam, which is me, as an unemployed, lazy peasant. So that you, you see me as a lazy, unemployed person, you that's just how you see me. And I'm saying, so imagine if you saw that Adam working. That means not unemployed, and that means not lazy. Because if you saw that Adam working, that would blow your mind. Okay, then the second meaning here is, I said, you view me as a peasant. Okay, a peasant is like the exact opposite of being a king. And I said, so, and then I also mentioned that I never blow your mind, and that I'm the ruler of the commercial business. And But so I'm saying the ruler... Uh, you view me as a peasant, but I'm the ruler, so I'm, you viewing me as the peasant in your own judgmental head, imagine if you saw that Adam were king. There you go. There's the double meaning. Okay, and then the third meaning is I mentioned that I, you think I would never blow your mind as earthlings. You see me as unemployed, and I am now the ruler of the commercial business, so imagine if you saw that Ad, I'm working. Ad is a common short for short word for advertisement, which is the same as a commercial. So I'm saying, imagine if you saw that ad or advertisement, I'm working. 
if you saw me working that ad. Okay, so that's triple meaning, three meanings, three implied multiple meanings in one line. Very talented, very raw. Okay, moving on here. I said, you're constipated and no longer making any raps to present that are bad. You don't have shit coming out, to be honest. So I basically said, okay, you're constipated, which means you cannot take a shit. I said, so you don't have shit coming out, to be honest. Okay, if you're constipated, then you can't have shit coming out. Simple as that part. And then the other meaning is basically, I'm saying, you're no longer making any raps to present that are bad. Okay, shit is also slang that means bad or bad material, bad stuff. And I'm saying you don't have that. You don't have bad stuff coming out. And I'm saying you don't have literally shit or poop or feces coming out. So those are simple double meaning there. I'm pretty sure everybody got that the first time, but just in case, I'm always willing to elaborate. I love this line. I, I really do. I was glad that I was able to write this one out. I said, if you want to discuss choices for who's the greatest rapper, I know whose face is the highest up so I can shed some light on the topic. Now, topic, T-O-P-I-C, and top pick, T-O-P space P-I-C-K. They sound exactly the same, and I made them multiple meaning because I said, okay, a, another thing, a common phrase is shed some light on the topic. That's a common phrase. Everybody's heard that phrase before. You know, it's, you know, you could talk about anything. You know, who, who knows about politics? Oh, I could shed some light on the topic. Okay, so what I'm saying is, okay, I... On the topic, which I named the topic, I said choices for who's the greatest rapper. And I said I could shed some light on the top pick. Let's go with the first part, T-O-P-I-C. And I know who's who's the greatest rapper, or at least whose choices are the greatest rapper, or who's the highest up there, so I can shed some light on the topic. That's the normal phrase. And I'm also saying I know, I say this in the line, I know whose face is the highest up. So when I say I can shed some light on the top pick or the top choice or the top number one whatever you want to call it so i basically said right there that's the next meaning and i didn't quite imply it for a triple meaning but i'm all i could have also said top pick as in p-i-c as in pick is a slang short word short for picture and i could say i'm shedding some light on the top pick in that sense too but i didn't quite imply that for a triple meaning Okay, but I love that line. I think it's pretty dope. I'm pretty sure everybody understood it the first time, but just in case, you know, I'm always willing to elaborate on my lines. You can always message me or ask me. I have no problem doing that. Okay, continuing here. <clears throat> this These two lines are also some of my favorites just because of me personally. I am completely colorblind. I can't see any colors. I can only see black, white, and gray. It's been that way my whole life, and I can't see any other colors than black, white, and gray. And so I just, I, want, I always like to throw in little things here and there. You know, I'm always getting teased about it and stuff. And so sometimes it's fun to come up with the dope ways to use it for something, which is in my writings for punchlines and metaphors and such. So in this one I said, which is me, again, being the best rapper from the previous line, which is me, and I can prove it now since I cite things as painless. And basically... Not an implying a double meaning, so it's not a double meaning this first line, but I'm saying um, I cite as an I space S I G H T and the word I cite E Y E S I G H T. I'm not implying a double meaning, and I didn't imply it in the way I said it or anything, but just, just a little play on words there. Painless, you see, cite things as painless, see things as painless. Okay. You don't see colors, you know, that's, it's painless, it's different. And then, you know, there's no emotion to it and stuff. Because, you know, you're missing colors, you know, you see things in a different light. And I'm not trying to be punning, pun intended or anything. And then, being that Adam's completely colorblind, <clears throat> you all look at me as, as someone who can only register for the gray test. Now, this one is a dope double meaning here. I'm saying... Greatest, G-R-E-A-T-E-S-T, -E -E and I'm saying gray test, G-R-A-Y space T-E-S-T. -E -T. Now, <clears throat> I'm saying I can't see colors. I'm completely colorblind. I always say that. I said, so I can only register for the greatest. Now, I can only register for the greatest, being the greatest rapper. 
so I can only register for the greatest. I can't register for the worst, obviously. And then being completely colorblind, what kind of test can I do for colors? The gray test. That's the only one I can do. I can't register for the, you know, rainbow color test or whatever the fuck. I can only do, you know, the the neutral, whatever you want to call it, the non-colors test, the gray test. So just they sound exactly the same. And I just implied it there to make a dope double meaning. And, you know, it's always fun to talk about my color blindness and use them for punchlines and such. Okay. The next double meaning is pretty dope, pretty complex, complicated. I, I don't know if anybody got it the first time they heard it, but shout out to you if you did. That'd be awesome. I said, there's young carnivorous mammals knocking cattle over, and the young Boy Scouts want to stop them from winning. So you can reward the kids for their service or help the cattle or help herding the cattle engage in the Cub Scout tipping. Okay, so basically what this comes down to here is, okay, you have the phrase Cub Scout tipping. You know what a Cub Scout is? It's the young, the young, <clears throat> what do you want to call it? Advancement to the young level of a Boy Scout is called the Cub Scout. Okay, and the other one, Sounds exactly the same, and the double meaning is Cubs Cow Tipping. C U B apostrophe S space C O W space tipping. Now, cow tipping, if you didn't know that, is knocking cattle over or knocking the cows over onto their, you know, onto their sides or whatever. Cow tipping is a, is a crime, I believe, but you knock over a cow, they can't get up, and that's why it's, you know, illegal or frowned upon or abuse or, you know, all the above. And so basically saying here that um, I said carnivorous mammals. I said young carnivorous mammals, okay, because a cub is a young animal baby, okay? That's what they are. And I said carnivorous mammals because, yeah, it's not all animals, but a carnivorous mammal, that's what a cub is, a baby, excuse me. A young carnivorous mammal is a cub, okay? And then I said, knocking cattle over, well, that's cow tipping, okay? And I said, the Boy Scouts, the young Boy Scouts, which is the Cub Scouts, the young Boy Scouts want to stop them from winning. And I said, so you can reward the kids for their service, which would be tipping the Cub Scouts or help herding the cattle doing what the young carnivorous mammals are doing with cow tipping, and you can help herd the cattle. And I imply it there. I said engage in the cubs cow tipping. So the same, cubs cow tipping or scout tipping. You just hold that S sound and do it the right timing, and you will sound exactly the same. Dope double meaning there. Okay, moving on here to the next one. This one's just a hilarious freaking line I came up with. I just I fucking laughed throughout writing this shit. I said, I saw you're looking for a hot girl to advise your money and work your keyboard. Is that right? Here's one woman for those reasons. Financial type. Okay. The word financial or the words fine and she apostrophe LL sound exactly the same. Financial. Financial, S H E apostrophe L L. So, you know, this is what I do. I say, you want a hot girl, a, fi a fine girl means a hot girl, same thing. And I'm saying, you want her to advise being financial. You want somebody who's the financial type because you want someone with the money. And I, I said specifically, implying you want, you want them to work your keyboard. Well, here's a woman for those reasons. Fine and she'll type. That's everything you wanted right there, but it's also double meaning because I'm saying financial type. And that's the type you wanted. So dope double meaning there. Just a funny line, but funny play on words there I was able to come up with. Okay, moving on here. I was stupid trying to get people to vote for Adam. My horrible political campaign I just mentioned out of nowhere, that was random. Now, the words random, R-A-N-D-O-M, space dumb, sound exactly the same. And I said, my horrible political campaign, dumb, it was ran 
victim. If you ran a bad political campaign, you could say it was ran dumb. And I mentioned that it was stupid. So that's where I implied that it was dumb. It was ran dumb. The campaign was ran dumb. And I said I mentioned it out of nowhere. Random. R-A-N-D-O-M. It was random that I mentioned that out of nowhere. So just the dope dumb meaning. They're easy to figure out. Pretty hilarious. I said I pee 34 ounces every time while trying hard for a dictatorship. It's a one liter per piss. Now the words U-R-P-O-S-E and the two word conjunction per piss P-U-R hyphen P-I-S-S sound exactly the same. And the words leader sound exactly the same. It's a homophone except one is L-I-T-E-R which is an amount 34 ounces or liter R. Now peeing 34 ounces um, is one liter. So it's a one liter per piss. Okay, because I said I pee 34 ounces. Piss means pee. I'm pretty sure you guys know that. And then I said trying hard for a dictatorship. Well, that is a dictatorship means a singular liter purpose. And so I said a one liter purpose. Okay, then I said a funny little double meaning here. I said silent cat with no oyster necklace. Pearless. Pearlless or cat per pearless. A purless means a cat that is purless. It's not making the purring sound. It's unable to do so. It cannot function in that regard because it's a silent cat, which I which I mentioned and implied. And a pearl necklace is an oyster necklace. So I said no oyster necklace. So it's pearlless necklace. Okay, just a funny double meaning there. Keeping on with the theme of this entire rap, I have in them be multiple meanings. Okay, continuing on here. You saw a woman who needed a change, gave her advice and more in hopes that she'd use it. You saw her on one side, one angle, ugly legs with obtuse curves. You're a smart surgeon and a physical trainer advisor with a chance to prove it. Plus, she's had a bad buildup of earwax. You solved all of those problems with good measure when she was given a Q-tip. Okay, this is a triple meaning here. Three implied meanings in one rhyme. You say it one way, it means three different things. So... First, acute, A-C-C-U-T-E, tip, and then a Q tip, as in A, and then the letter Q, and then tip. A Q tip is what you use to clean up your ears. It's a tool. And then I said a cute hip, H-I-P, a cute hip. So I said this woman had obtuse curves, ugly legs, but you only saw them on one side and one angle. Okay, so... As a physical trainer advisor, and you having a chance to prove it, as I implied in this line, I said, you solved all of these problems. So that would include that one. And I said, so you gave her a cute tip. Basically, you had that angle that was obtuse with the bad curves, and you gave her a cute tip. A cute is the opposite of obtuse. A right angle is in the middle because that's 90 degrees. Obtuse is above 90 degrees. Acute is less than 90 degrees. So I basically said you gave her the kind of a uh, tip that she would have appreciated, of course. Then I said, you gave her a Q-tip. I said she had a bad buildup of earwax, so she was given by you things to solve all those problems, as I implied. So I said, you gave her a Q-tip. Sounds exactly the same. And then a cute hip. I said she was ugly with, or her legs were, excuse me, Sarah one side, one angle. She had ugly legs, stuff two curves. You're a smart surgeon and a physical trainer advisor, chance to prove it. I said, you solved all these problems, so there you go. She needed a change, I mentioned, implied too. So you gave her a cute hip. You gave her all three of those things. So just a dope triple meaning there, and we'll continue on now. I said, okay, strange weird town. You run it, and you hate mobile phones, and you had a motive to get rid of it. You also wanted the music bands to play only one type of sound maker I despise, but those are my feelings. You don't give a shit. Some nerve you have. You got the audacity to get on board and vote xylophone instrument. Okay, this one's dope, dope, dope. It's a double meaning, and it's an interchangeable double meaning. Okay, you're going to love this one. So I'm saying that I'm, I am new. I'm coming to your town that you run. You run this town, and I think it's strange and it's weird. Okay, you hate... 
okay and i have my phone and i was i was saying phone and i said you also wanted the music plant bands excuse me to play one type of sound maker that i despise so you wanted them to, to play the xylophone instrument and i despise it and i said those are my feelings you don't give a shit now i'm saying that you don't give a shit about my feelings cell phones and only playing the xylophone instrument because imply it when i say some nerve you have now in one meaning i said you got the audacity now the word audacity a u d a c i t e that's a saying when if you say somebody you city to coach that i skip school whatever it is you're saying okay that's basically saying is you got the nerve to do that you had the nerve the the goal actually the wherewithal to actually go and go through and do that to take action for your point you you went through with something just to do that okay so that's audacity and then i said you got the audacity to get on board and vote exylophone instrument so is a phone instrument that's what it is it's a phone instrument an instrument of sound and you know it's an a phone instrument obviously is a device that you use to take calls text messages and pages you know and take take part in communicating so i said you got the city on board to vote exylophone instrument now in the other part i'm saying odd ass city which sounds the same as audacity but odd ass city because that's just slang i'm saying you i already mentioned you're from a strange weird town that you run so i said you got the odd city that's an insult i'm insulting you and your city to get on board so you got your city you run to get on board to vote a xylophone instrument because i mentioned that you only wanted the bands to play one type of sound maker despite my feelings about that so you got them to to vote to only play the xylophone instrument and it sounds exactly the same xylophone instrument and the break broken up phrase exile a phone instrument e x i l e space a space p h o n e okay exile means to to get rid of to ban basically okay so it sounds exactly the same double meaning here and an interchangeable meaning in the middle of the end because i said audacity and odd ass city you can use either one of those and it works because i mentioned that some nerve you have and i mentioned that it's a strange weird town and i mentioned that i have you know no problem saying that i i don't like it so the insulting is perfectly natural to apply here so dope double meaning there you know just a funny little line okay continuing on here this one i doubt people got the first time maybe they did though so i'm just going to go through it anyways i said i bought your aquarium for freshwater fish i'm so glad but only one kind so far to surface so for now for now i'll say thank you for the purchase okay so basically now the word purchase p-u-r-c-h-a-s-e is obviously that's a purchase that means you bought something that is the end result of of taking action and buying something okay or perch apostrophe s perch is a type of fish so i'm saying thank you for the perches okay the perches purchase and the perch is making that um <clears throat> plural so the word purchase buying something and the fish uh plural perches sounds exactly the same and i mentioned that i bought an aquarium for freshwater fish now perches are a freshwater fish but i only made that was able to make this a double meaning implying the perches because i said that i am glad but only one kind so far to surface was able to see one kind of fish so far able to make this a double meaning by saying thank you I'm glad, so obviously I'd say thank you for the purchase, the other meaning. Okay, continuing on here, 
I said, I'm here with everyone else lost at sea, no parents with this group of poor kids, and I'm not sure if they can't swim or can't breathe in the water, so I will ask all of them, do you need gills or fins? Okay, so this was a dope double meaning. You know, it is kind of a sad one, but it just, you know, it's a double meaning, and I'm a very talented writer. I'm able to think outside of the box, come up with dope concepts, and blow your mind every time, hopefully. So basically, um, if you're if there's no parents and there's a group of poor kids lost at sea, they would be orphans, O-R-P-H-A-N-S, orphans, which means kids that are orphans, which means they don't have parents. They are kids without legal guardians yet or, and so on. And I said there was no parents with the group. They're lost at sea, so they would be. And I said, I'm not sure if they can't swim or can't breathe in the water, so I will ask all of them, do you need gills or fins? Now, or fins, O-R space F-I-N-S, and the word orphans, same, 100%. And I basically said, okay, if they don't know how to breathe, well, gills can help you breathe. Gills are what fish breathe in the water with. And then fins is helping to swim. Fins are the best thing to swim with. So I was saying, should I ask them if they need gills to help breathe or fins to help swim? But it's also implying, do you need gills or fins? Because the kids are orphans. So just a double meaning there. Just a you know dope concept to bring everything together. Okay, continuing on here. This line's pretty funny. I said, you're meticulously counting everything, trying to lose weight without Weight Watchers. You commit arson on automobiles as your workout, so every time you do, you say, another car burnt. So the double meaning comes here at the very end, because basically the word another is, in, is the same, but car burnt, car space B-U-R-N-T, or carb burnt, C-A-R-B space B-U-R-N-T. So um, when you... If you commit arson on automobiles, that is burning cars. So when you're done with, if that's your workout, which I hope to God it's not, but if that's your workout, then when you're done doing arson on cars, on automobiles, on vehicles, it would be another car burnt because that's what you do. You burn them is what you do when you're doing arson. And then also, if that's your workout, well, then you would be losing carbs because that's what you do when you're, and doing a workout and you're on Weight Watchers and such and such, is you're always thinking about burning carbs. So if that is if that is your method of working out, then every time you do your workout, you would say that's another carb burnt. Okay, so that's just a double meaning there. Just a funny one that I just threw in there. Just thought it'd be funny. Okay. Continuing on here with the theme of always having double meanings and, uh, excuse me, multiple meanings in every one of the lines here. I said, okay, time for a surprise secret road, ship, road trip to big casinos. You prefer me to tell you where, though, and admit I'm bad at being specific. You win. I say vague is definitely the way to go. Okay, so double meaning because I said, okay. Now, the word Vegas is a, is a pronoun, and it's a place. It's Vegas is short for Las Vegas. Everybody knows this, pretty sure, but just to those who may, may not have caught it or didn't know. Vegas, okay, that is where the most casinos are in, at least in North America, okay? So I said it's a secret surprise road trip to big casinos. Okay, and the other thing that's in the sense that sounds exactly like the word Vegas is saying vague space is, V-A-G-U-E space I-S. Now, vague is the definition of being nonspecific or, you know, trailing off or not giving answers to. So I said, okay, it's a secret road trip. You prefer me not to tell you. Um, you and then I said, you want me to admit I'm bad at being specific. So in the double meaning, I say you win. I say Vegas, definitely the way to go. So as in Las Vegas, definitely the way to go. So I give you the answer, but then you also wanted me to admit I'm bad at being specific. So then I, in the same, say it the same way, it means two different meanings, and I say, you want me to admit I'm bad at being specific? You win. I say vague is 
definitely the way to go. So there you go. Double meaning. Say it one way. It's got two different meanings. Okay, continuing here. This is just a funny line. Very screwed up line, but I think it's very hilarious nonetheless. I said, imagine the worst job ever. Porn. With everything making you feel hard on yourself. And during your review, you don't know what to say. Your boss is a director and a fickle critic. He tells you, you did fucking great. You suck today. So, okay. Uh, I, I added the... <laughs> The worst job ever would probably be porn, okay? And I said, with everything making you feel hard on yourself. Okay, that one, it wasn't a double meaning. It was just me being funny. That's all that was. I was just trying to hopefully get some people to laugh. Okay, hard on is obviously slang for having a boner or an erection, okay? And also, if you're feeling hard on yourself, that means, you know, you are your worst critic and you're harshly critiquing your own, self and everything you do and then i'm saying not only would porn be the worst job but during your review you don't know what to say because i said your boss at your porn job is a director and he's a fickle critic so you're wondering what does it mean when he tells you you did fucking great you suck today okay because fucking great does he mean you did you did fucking great, as in you did a great job at your job. Or does he mean you did fucking or intercourse great, because this is porn. And then I'm saying you suck today. Okay, is basically, now, what comes to mind is, is really the answer to this question. Okay, does he, when he says you suck today, now all this, he said you were great, but then he said you suck. Now, does he mean you suck, as in you suck you know, private parts and, and nipples and thing. Is that is he instructing you, saying you suck today? That's you're on the docket for that. Or is he saying it as in a critique, like you suck today, as in you're not doing good today, you're doing bad. <laughs> so that's just a funny line where, you know, you gotta wonder which one is it? He's a porn director and he's a fickle critic. So which one is it? Is he giving you the good news or is he giving you an order? You don't even know because these People are so far gone and so perverted, you don't know which meaning he's trying to really say. Okay, on to the next line here. I said, never met your mother until now, and I forgot her name. This is Dandy. Now, I say that sarcastically, as in, this is Dandy. I forgot her name. I said, she looks like an hourglass figure. Her name is Sandy. Okay, now here's where the double meaning comes into play here. And anybody who caught this the first time, props to you. This one took me actually quite a long time to write, believe it or not. But I'm saying, I never met your mother. I don't know her name. Okay. But I said, she looks like an hourglass figure. Her name is Sandy. So in one meaning, I'm saying, she looks like an hourglass. Let's say an actual hourglass. If you don't know what an hourglass is, an hourglass is a glass little sort of a enclosure which is filled with sand and you tip it upside down, and it's used as a timer, okay? And then when the sand rolls down to the bottom part of the glass, you tip it over and do the timer again. So an hourglass is filled with sand. So if if your mother looked like a freaking hourglass, then I'm jokingly saying, figure her name is Sandy, okay? Because she's like, like she's filled with sand. And now the other in double meaning here implied is, okay, uh, the saying hourglass figure means a woman's body is basically the, you know, uniform, perfect shape of a body, an hourglass figure. That's that's what they call that, an hourglass figure. I don't know what the numbers are, but it just – it's like the, the woman that – the supermodel woman that they, they want all women to look like is an hourglass figure, okay? And so um, with those curves and stuff. So I'm saying the other multiple meaning here is I'm saying she looks like an hourglass figure. Her name is Sandy. Okay, so it's just just a nice, funny double meaning there. You know, I'm always, you know, talking shit about people's moms and stuff. All right, continuing on here. Here's a nice triple meaning here, very talented. Triple implied meaning, say it once and say it in one way, and it's got three implied meanings here. So I said... What are you up to with your cab company you run? Greedy, evil agenda. Your gas is hurting people pursuing. 
so extra fuel money levied for the cars purposely, offensively coming down hard on people on what a taxi is using. So here's the triple meaning. First, let's go through them. A uh, or A space taxis using A space T-A-X-I-S space using. Uh, okay, a taxi. If you're running a cab company, that means you are running a taxi company. Taxis, taxi cabs, taxis. Okay, and I said that, you know, basically you're levying um, extra money on the gas, which is hurting people. So you're coming down hard on what a taxi is using because a taxi is using what? Gas, fuel. Okay, the second meaning here is a tax he's using. A space T-A-X space H-E apostrophe S space U-S-I-N-G. Okay, so on what a tax he's using because he's having levying for extra fuel money. That's what that is. That means he's taxing it. Okay, so that's evil. I'm saying he's taxing. He is adding a tax is what he's using on the gas for extra money to be evil and to, you know, run a greedy agenda to hurt people. Okay, and then I'm saying a tax he's using. A-T-T-A-C-K-S space H-E apostrophe S space using. Okay, because like I said, he's purposely, the guy running this company is purposely doing this to come down hard on people with a tax, you know, money, extortion, you know, sort of things, you know, you could say are a tax, and that's what he's doing. He's coming down with these attacks on their money, but that's, he's coming down with these attacks. So three meanings, what the fuel a tax he's using, okay, um, extra money levying for this fuel, a uh, tax he's using, and purposely coming down hard on the people, a tax he's using, okay. So triple meaning there, very dope, very talented line. Let's continue on here. All right, this line's pretty funny. I just thought this one was hilarious. I'm pretty sure everybody got this the first time, but just in case. I said, after I shower, I realized what my life was meant for something better. I'm tired of always being on the prowl, drying off, and I'm quitting my job on laundry day. Time to throw in the towel. Okay, so time to throw in the towel. That's a very common phrase. You've all heard that in your life before. Throwing in the time to throw in the towel means time to quit. That means time to be an end to it. Or you know, if you look at boxing, which is one of my favorite sports, you throw in the towel into the ring, and that means you you quit. You're speaking on behalf of your, you know, your fighter, and then he or she quits. So, okay, that's the main ba the first one. Throwing the towel means to quit. But I'm also saying, I'm dry. I, I took a shower. I say that on purpose because I say. I'm drying off, which I would just need one towel to dry off. And I'm saying it's laundry day, so it's time to throw in the towel because you, when you're done with your towel and it's laundry day, you throw the towel in. So just, just a funny double meaning there. I'm pretty sure everybody caught that one, but just in case, I elaborated. Okay, continuing on here. <clears throat> this is the very end of this, of this rap, and I wanted to end it with the big... Seven implied meaning line. You say the line one way, and it has seven implied meanings. Seven. Okay, it's it's got to be one of the greatest rhymes and lines ever written in documented human history, at least as far as technical skill is concerned. I understand everybody has opinions on what makes writing good, bad, what makes lyrics good, bad. I understand that. I am simply saying technical skill, you have to put my work up there with the greatest. Technical skill, okay? <clears throat> I haven't seen anybody else write a seven implied meaning line, okay? So, and the first line here isn't the seven meaning line, but it's me basically telling the audience what it is before I actually say it so that I'm able to brag about it, put it in their heads so they know to listen closer and since it's the last line, you know, it's okay to mention that it's going to be over in a second. So I said, I laugh at those who never even try. Even though I try to avoid using pronouns, I will leave you all with the seven implied meanings line. Now, before I say the line, that is true. I do try my best to avoid using pronouns. 
um, when I do my lines specifically because I don't want a reference to get old when this piece of work is old. So I would like it if it was able to last longer. If I'm using pronouns in every single line, well, in 20 years, you're not going to know what movie or whatever it is I was talking about or what video game I was talking about. So I try not to use pronouns, which are specific, specific, specific things, because they may not exist later. And or when the next generation comes and they're going over my work, they're going to say, well, what was Adam talking about with that? I don't know what that is. Well, it's because it's old now. If I use non-specific things, then it lasts longer because they'll always be around. You'll always have ice. You'll always have snow and heat and and you know guns or whatever. So I, you know, things like that, non-specific or just normal nouns. Anyways, so now here is the seven implied meaning line. So I said, I have your collection of rye bread, your rice, your letter I writing practice sheets, your ice, your rise video game disc. Your Rise 2014 DVD, and you are paying attention to me during this matter. I'm throwing all of these things, and you're looking around in all directions. I made your eyes scatter. Okay, seven implied meanings. I made your is the same, and then the word after the thing, the third part, the fourth part of the <coughs> line, the last word scatter is the same. There is no cutting up of that word. That word isn't dis disemboweled in any way. It's the same. So your I apostrophe S scatter, your ice, I-C-E scatter, your rice, because I'm carrying the R from the end of the word your into the I sound with a lot of these. So your rice, R-I-C-E, your rice, um, R-I-S-E pronoun, your Rise, R Y E apostrophe S, your rise, R Y S E pronoun, because that's a video game, it's a specific thing, and your eyes, E Y E S. So I basically I say that I grab all of these specific things and I throw them up. And I said, You're paying attention to me. I specifically mentioned that, which means you're looking right at me, you've got your undivided attention. And I said, I'm throwing all of them all, and you're looking all around at everything I'm throwing. Okay. So if I do that, your eyes, your two eyes, E Y E S S are going to scatter because you're looking at everything. I mentioned you were, so I implied it. And then I, I grabbed your rice, which is a video game. Um, I, your rice, which is your rye bread. So your rice, you, you saw those scatter. I made those scatter. Your rice, which is a DVD from 2014, it's a, it's a movie. I said I made your rice scatter. Okay, I said I grabbed, grabbed your collection of rice. So your rice scatter. Okay, I said that I got your ice, and I made your ice scatter. And I said your letter I practice sheets. Okay, when you're learning how to how to write. And learning how to practice on your letters, they have them for each letter. And I said, just your letter I writing practice sheets, because otherwise it wouldn't be able to imply this seventh meaning. So your eyes scatter. So all seven of those things happened. Six things scattered. And then the seventh meaning, meaning that your eyes themselves scattered. Your eyes were looking left, right, up, front, center, and back and forth, looking at everything that was flying in the air that I implied because you were paying attention to me while I was throwing everything in all directions. So seven implied meanings in one line. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment, write a message to me if you want to. I'm always willing to answer questions about my, my works and the stuff I've done over the years. Just keep in mind, as I say, is I am one of the greatest writers of all time, and I only mean that for technical level because I am, I completely understand that everything is opinionated, everything is viewed differently, up to every person objectively different. But in as far as technical skill, um, I cannot be denied my talent. Okay, seven implied meanings in one line, and this entire rap I just did had multiple meanings in every single line. I did that on purpose because I wanted just to, to have 
I wanted to have a rap like this where I go all out and every single thing I say has a multiple meaning. So you have to listen very carefully. And for those you missed, I answered it here in this video. So thank you all very much for uh, tuning in. And I will always answer any questions you may have. So don't be afraid to ask anytime. So thank you guys very much. Everybody have a good one.